High above Earth, something seemingly impossible has happened. The United Kingdom's oldest satellite, Skynet 1A, is not where it should be. The half-ton military spacecraft, launched at the height of the Cold War in 1969, was originally positioned over the east coast of Africa, tasked with relaying critical communications for British forces. But today, it's halfway around the planet, and nobody knows who moved it there or why. When a satellite dies, the laws of orbital mechanics dictate its eternal dance through space. Skynet 1A should have drifted steadily eastward after it stopped functioning. Instead, sometime in the mid-1970s, the spacecraft made an inexplicable journey west, defying fundamental physics. Now, as experts analyze historical records and classified documents, they're uncovering troubling questions about one of the Cold War's best-kept secrets, and why its current position could pose risks for modern satellites. The story of Skynet 1A began near the dawn of the space age, just months after Neil Armstrong's historic first steps on the moon in July 1969. Manufactured in America by the Philco Ford Aerospace Company and launched on a U.S. Air Force Delta rocket, this pioneering satellite represented Britain's first venture into military space operations. From its strategic position above East Africa, it had a coverage footprint that stretched from Europe to the Far East. It could connect London with forces as far away as Singapore, revolutionizing British military communications as it transmitted critical orders, intelligence, and diplomatic traffic. The satellite's deployment was a source of great pride for Britain, demonstrating its technological prowess and signaling its determination to remain a major player on the world stage, even as its colonial empire was in decline. However, Skynet 1A's tenure would be short-lived. Just 18 months after its launch, the satellite suddenly went silent. All attempts to re-establish contact failed. It seems that all of the Skynet 1A's traveling wave tube amplifiers stopped working, likely as a result of a failure in its soldered high-voltage joints when moving between extreme temperatures. With its communication system out of action, the once groundbreaking spacecraft was transformed into another piece of space debris drifting through the void. Under normal circumstances, the laws of physics should have gradually pulled Skynet 1A eastward, dragging it closer toward a position over the middle of the Indian Ocean. It moves in what is known as a geostationary orbit. This is a special path, over 22,000 miles above Earth's equator, where a satellite takes around 24 hours to circle the planet, orbiting in sync with Earth's own rotation. From the ground, a satellite in geostationary orbit appears motionless in the sky, always above the same spot on Earth thus making it ideal for communications. But even in this seemingly stable orbit, small forces are at play. The Earth isn't a perfect sphere. It bulges out slightly at the equator. This creates areas of higher and lower gravitational pull. Over time, without any intervention, these variations cause geostationary satellites to drift toward zones known as gravity wells, orbital sweet spots where a satellite naturally settles. For defunct satellites such as Skynet 1A, this drift usually pulls them eastward. Yet space consultant Dr. Stuart Eaves made a startling discovery. Instead of floating east, Skynet 1A had traveled in completely the opposite direction, ending up more than 22,000 miles west, a journey that should have been impossible without deliberate intervention. It seemed someone must have commanded Skynet 1A to fire its thrusters, sending it on a voyage across the Earth's orbital sphere. The enigma deepens when we consider who was in control of Skynet 1A at the time of its unexplained maneuver. Historical records show that after its launch, the satellite was initially operated by American forces, who controlled it in orbit and tested its software before handing over control to the British Royal Air Force. However, control over Skynet 1A wasn't always clear-cut. During periods of maintenance at RAF Oak Hangar, the base from which the British Armed Forces Worldwide Satellite Communication Services were supported. The Skynet crew would sometimes travel to the U.S. Air Force Satellite Control Facility in Sunnyvale, California, colloquially known as the Blue Cube, to operate the satellite from there. Former Skynet engineer Graham Davidson recalls, quote, There was a dual control system, but when or why Skynet 1A might have been handed back to the Americans, which seems likely, I'm afraid I can't remember. Rachel Hill, a PhD candidate at University College London who has been digging through archives, believes the move could have occurred during one of these oak-outs, 
as the times RAF Okanner was out of action were known. The last confirmed commanding of Skynet 1A from the UK was in June 1977, when Okanner lost contact with the satellite. After that point, it appears control was fully in American hands. But why the US would have moved the satellite to such a peculiar orbit remains unclear. Even in the 1970s, Standard practice was to boost inoperative satellites into a so-called graveyard orbit, hundreds of miles above operational spacecraft, reducing the risk of collision. Eves has been unable to come up with an answer as to why this was not done. He says, quote, The official records offer no explanation. I've searched through old satellite catalogs, the National Archives, and spoken with satellite experts worldwide. The end-of-life behavior of Britain's oldest spacecraft remains a complete mystery. Some have suggested that there could have been a disagreement between the UK and the US over the satellite's movement or control that led to its movement being kept secret. Perhaps Skynet 1A was caught up in a behind-the-scenes tussle between allies, its fate a bargaining chip in some larger negotiation. Or maybe the truth is darker still. As the 1960s opened up a new battleground for the Cold War in space, the satellite's unexplained drift could have been interpreted as a sign of Soviet meddling with dark undercurrents of suspicion and secrecy flowing beneath the era's space race, the possibility of a critical military asset like Skynet 1A being covertly interfered with or even hijacked by Britain and the United States communist rivals seems impossible to rule out. Whatever really happened may never come to light, but one thing is certain and undoubtedly a cause for great concern. Skynet 1A now finds itself in a crowded region of space, posing a hazard to other satellites. Eves says, quote, It's now in what we call a gravity well at 105 degrees west longitude, wandering back and forth like a marble at the bottom of a bowl. And unfortunately, this brings it close to other satellite traffic on a regular basis. Because it's dead, the risk is it might bump into something. The dangers posed by its current orbit are far from trivial. In the 1970s, space was a considerably less crowded place. Today, a reliance on satellite technology has filled Earth's orbital pathways with critical infrastructure. A collision with even a small piece of space junk can be catastrophic. In Skynet 1A's current location, operational satellites can expect to pass within around 30 miles of debris up to four times a day. At orbital speeds, that's far too close for comfort. Mariba Ja, an aerospace engineer and space debris expert at the University of Texas in Austin, warns, quote, Pieces of space junk are like ticking time bombs. We need to avoid what I call super spreader events. When these things explode or something collides with them, it generates thousands of pieces of debris that often become a hazard to something else we care about. The potential consequences of a collision in space were dramatically illustrated in October 2024, when a Boeing built satellite owned by Intelsat suddenly disintegrated in geostationary orbit. The incident created a cloud of at least 500 pieces of debris, ranging in size from softballs to car doors. While the exact cause of the satellite's demise remains under investigation, the resulting debris field highlights the precarious nature of operations in Earth's increasingly crowded orbits. A collision involving Skynet 1A could trigger a similar cascade of debris, threatening other satellites, and potentially setting off a catastrophic chain reaction known as Kessler Syndrome. The British government, for its part, says it is closely monitoring the situation. The UK Space Agency has already funded several projects to develop technologies to remove orbital debris. Other nations are making strides too. Both China and the US have demonstrated the capability to capture defunct satellites, even in the distant geostationary orbit where Skynet 1A resides. Yet, as the mystery of Skynet 1A's movement illustrates, the challenge is not merely technological. It is also one of communication, coordination, and transparency between nations in space. Eve suggests, quote, Ultimately, the UK government may need to take responsibility for moving Skynet 1A to a safer orbit. But this incident also highlights the need for better international collaboration in managing our shared orbital environment. As the skies grow increasingly crowded and our dependence on satellite infrastructure deepens, Solving the puzzle of Skynet 1A's secret maneuvers 
may offer valuable lessons for the future of humanity's cosmic endeavors, the security of our satellite networks, and the sustainability of space itself could depend on it.